click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. Now today I'm going to talk about linear programming problem. What is a linear programming problem and how exactly we solve a linear programming problem? Now, how can I define linear programming problem properly called as LPP? Now, LPP can be called as a technique of specifying how to use the resources which have alternate uses and which are limited to optimize certain objectives. For example, as a farmer, I may have limited resources which I need to use in a manner so that my overall production or my overall profit is maximized. As a carpenter, I might have limited resources in the form of glue and wood and I need to estimate how to use them to either make chairs or tables so that my overall profit is maximized. So every linear programming problem is a optimization problem. Now in every linear programming problem we will have an objective. Objective defines what is the purpose of solving that problem. The purpose can be to minimize the cost, purpose can be to maximize the sales or the profit or the contribution or it can be to maximize the production or the output or the rainfall or anything like that. So every linear programming problem will have a maximization or minimization as its objective function. And this objective function will be denoted by Z. Next thing, to achieve this objective, which will be defined in terms of an equation, we need to use certain resources. Now, these resources are limited, plus they have multiple uses or alternate uses. In case of carpenter, the wood and the glue can be used to make either chairs or tables. So, same resources have more than one use and all the resources are limited. These two factors create the problem because if there are not limited resources, then there won't be any problem as such. Because I have limited resources, because those resources have multiple uses, it creates a problem that can be called as a linear programming problem and we need to express these limits in the form of constraints. These constraints can be defined in terms of inequalities. They can be used in terms of less than equal to sign or they can be in terms of more than equal to sign. Either of the two can be used to define the constraints. Constraints will indicate the area within which my linear programming problem solution will lie. When the constraints are plotted on the graph, one can easily identify the area on the graph which will define my solution to the linear programming problem. And last but not the least, because we are talking about linear programming problem and to make it more realistic, we introduce something called as non-negativity constraints.
now this non negativity constraints basically defines the value of any two variables that are assumed in a lpp for example if i assume x number of chairs and y number of tables so this x and y cannot be negative because in real life i can make zero tables i can make zero chairs but i can't make minus five chairs or minus two tables therefore x and y shall always have the positive values this shall be indicated by non negativity constraints that is x more than equals to 0 y more than equals to 0 by writing is more than equal to sign i am clearly defining that my x and y cannot be negative because x and y is the quantity the number of bags the number of units the sales or maybe the number of units produced it can be anything therefore it can't be negative and therefore we have given a constraint that x and y cannot be negative but it can be positive that is more than zero it can be exactly equal to zero and that's why you have written x more than equal to zero y more than equal to zero so for every linear programming problem we have a objective function for every linear programming problem we have an objective function which will be defined in terms of x and y and there will be minimum two to three constraints in every problem and at last we will note down the non-negativity constraints i hope you got the basic thing about linear programming problem now the next part is how is this linear programming problem applied which are the areas where i can use lpp as a tool to solve my problem let's see So under industrial applications, the areas where LPP can be used in the industries, it can be used in the logistic industries to minimize the overall of time, it can be used to solve the transportation problems, it can be used to solve problems based on production, blending or mixture, then basic problems where we want to optimize the production, where we optimize the cell. This is the areas where I can use a linear programming problem as a very vital tool. Other than that, where I want to minimize or trim out my losses, areas where I want to solve the problem of transportation by LPB, I can simply use LPB as a tool to solve the problem. Where there are more than two variables, X and Y, we can also use something called as simplex method although that method is not there in our syllabus but one must always know what is a simplex method or at least must be familiar with the whole name called as simplex the name itself indicates it is simple but in contrary it is very a complicated method or a complex method then we have some management applications Under management applications, we can use linear programming in multiple ways. One way is to select the media among the media available. In what way I should select the different medias like radio, TV, internet, newspaper, magazines, weekly magazines, fortnightly magazines, so that my overall reach or my audience is maximized. Then it can be selection of the portfolio. Okay, just like product mix, I may need a portfolio mix to decide so as to optimize my profit. In those cases also, we can use a linear programming technique to estimate 
how much money should be allocated to which one particular resources then it can be used for solving a problem of staffing where I want to decide how much staff I should maintain in a hospital or in a warehouse on daily basis 24 by 7 I can easily use staffing as a method to sort out the problem then problem where I need to decide the financial mix how much should be the debt how much should be the equity how much should be the borrowed funds or the debentures that can be easily understood and solved through a linear programming problem and last but not the least we have some miscellaneous types like solving a problem of scheduling of the airlines or the diet mix problem okay in those cases it may happen that we may use linear programming problem to minimize the time to minimize the distance or to minimize the cost anyways this was all about the basic of linear programming problem we already discussed what is a linear programming problem we talked about what are the applications of linear programming problem we didn't talk about something called as the limitations now what can be the possible limitations of LPP limitations of LPP the last aspect of LPP that is the limitations what are the possible limitations of linear programming problem the first and foremost is that you can't use LPP for solving the most complicated problems where there are multiple variables involved second biggest disadvantage of LPP is difficulty or complex nature of calculations the whole calculations under the simplex method are too complicated therefore this method is a bit difficult for the student to understand under LPP the third factor is that it is assumed that all the other factors or the resources remain constant during the period of study however in real life this might not be true on daily basis where the resources keep on changing right from money or capital or the man or the machines all the resources keep on changing therefore this assumption looks a bit unrealistic next limitation of LPP can be linear programming problem does not take into account the time and the uncertainty which is very much relevant in today's world nothing is certain as such and therefore with changing nature of all the factors it becomes very difficult to use LPP as a tool to estimate or to sort out a problem and one last limitation of LPP can be LPP is something that is very difficult to adopt or implement in practical life because in practical life we might find situations with too many complicated problems or constraints or limitations and therefore in those situations solving the problem by LPP even with the largest computer may be too cumbersome or difficult therefore LPP may not be suitable in those circumstances I hope you got the things clear we talked about something called as LPP its meaning then what is the process of formulating a linear programming problem and at last we talked about the applications where this LPP can be implemented or used and then we talked about the limitations of LPP thanks for watching this video do subscribe to our channel Ikeda